Okay, we have a return interesting integral. This one's from the MIT integration, should be 2010, problem 10. We've got the integral from zero to pi over four, square root tan x dx. Okay, I've already done a previous video on this. What I did in the first one was I did this using basically straightforward methods like a u substitution. And here, this time what I'm gonna do is a little bit of a trick on this that's gonna be a little less intuitive. So to start with on this, what I'm gonna do is Let's just get this dx out of the way for the moment. We'll bring it back because you actually need a dx on an integral. But anyway, what I want to do here is I want to create cotangent, the square root of cotangent x. Because it turns out that when we do this, the reason it helps is actually this integral is not too bad. Whereas when we just have tan x, it's a little bit more of a problem. But of course, I can't just do this without changing it. So what we need to do is let's subtract it off so we have the same integral. So essentially what I did was just add 0. And then what I'd like to do is split this part off as a separate integral. The only thing is integrating cotangent x, that's basically as bad as our original problem. So this doesn't really help us. So what I can do is let's add another copy of tan x. I know this seems kind of crazy if you're not used to this, but this is actually gonna work out in the end. So doing it this way, when we split off this part as a separate integral, everything over here, now this integral is not bad either. So we have two integrals we can do. The only problem is we've still changed it here. This part, the cotangents is zero, but now we have two copies of tan x. So the way to fix that is let's just multiply by one half in front. And now at this point, after we made this whole mess here, this is actually the same thing. If you add this all together, we just get one copy of square root of tan x here. And so what I can do is I'll distribute in the one half and I'll split this into two integrals. But now from here, what I wanna do is let's just focus on one of these. Let's just start here. The steps we're going to take over here are going to be very similar when we work with this one over here. But what I want to do is come over here and let's get a common denominator. And we'll write it out in terms of sines and cosines. So for tangent, I can write this as I can split it up like square root of sine x over square root of cos x. And then doing the same thing over here for cotangent, we have square root cosine x over square root sine x. So then to get the common denominator, I want to multiply by square root sine x here. So we're just multiplying by one, and then here, same thing. Sorry, that's kind of a mess, but I think you know what I'm doing. We're multiplying by one here by multiplying by cosine over cosine. And when we do that, square root of sine x times square root of sine x, that's just gonna give me sine x here. And then square root of cos x, square root of cos x, that's gonna give me plus cosine here. And then the denominator is gonna become square root sine x cos x. And actually for this one, I won't do all the steps, but it's exactly the same thing. Getting a common denominator and rewriting this, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up with cosine x minus sine x over basically the same denominator or exactly the same denominator, square root sine x, cos x. So now let's just take this value and put it back in this integral and we'll take, and we'll take this value and put it back in this integral and continue from there. But now from here, I wanna use a trick that's come up a lot lately for some reason. I don't know why it just keeps happening, but I wanna do a u substitution where I basically already know what the du should be. I want the du to be all this stuff with the dx. And so we'll actually start with that. We'll start by saying our du is gonna be sine x plus cosine x. We're kind of doing a u substitution in reverse here. And then if you integrate this in order to get our u value, we end up with u equal to sine x minus cos x. Just noticing the derivative of sine is gonna be cosine, derivative of minus cosine is gonna be sine. And then the only trouble is we don't have sine minus cosine anywhere. We've got this sine x cos x. I have to find a way to substitute for that. Well, what I can do to figure this out, if I square this, we get u squared, this is gonna become sine squared plus cosine squared. That's just gonna be a one. And then for the middle terms, we're gonna have minus two sine x cos x. But this right here is the thing we wanna find, so we just need to isolate it. So if we have u squared subtracting one on both sides, we have u squared minus one equals minus two sine x cos x. I can flip the sign here like this and this, divide by two, cancel, divide by two, and now we've got our value for sine x cos x to plug in back here. So now we'll just go ahead with this substitution, only focusing on our first integral here, and let's see what happens. So we're gonna have one half in front, then first let's deal with our bounds. So when you plug in pi over four in here, you're gonna have one over square root of two minus one over square root of two, zero for the upper bound. You plug zero in here, sine is zero, zero, cosine of zero is one, so this is gonna give me minus one for the lower bound. Then again, this right here is gonna be du, and we have our value for this right here, but it's gonna be inside the square root. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this as square root one minus u squared. 
we have this two here, then we plug in, it's gonna give me like a square root of two here. Let's flip it and bring it into the numerator outside. This is just a constant. So what I can do is put a square root of two up front of the integral here. And that's pretty good because that's a pretty common integral right there. That's gonna be arc sine. And so now all we need to do is we just need to do the exact same thing over here on this one really quick. So I'm gonna use the same exact trick and we'll go a little quicker on this one. So I'll use a different variable on this. So I'm gonna set the whole, I'm gonna set this equal to our dt. So for our dt, we're gonna say that's cosine x minus sine x. Same process, you integrate this and you get t is gonna be just equal to sine x plus cosine x. When you square this out and solve for sine x cos x, it's gonna work basically the same way with a just slightly different expression. What you're gonna get is sine x times cosine x is gonna be equal to t squared minus one over two. So now we'll just go ahead with this, bring our minus one half out front, plugging pi over four in here, you get one over square root of two. Same thing here, two over square root of two, but that can be written as square root of two if you just reduce that. And then plugging a zero in here, we're gonna have zero plus one, or just one for the lower bound. And then this whole thing is gonna transform into dt over square root of this, t squared minus one, but again, I'll take the two and bring it out front here and write it as square root of two. And now we can just go ahead and integrate. I'm just gonna use formulas on both these because they're both very, because these are both well-known integrals. So we're gonna have our square root of two over two in front. This is just gonna be arc sine of u, and we just need to evaluate that from minus one to zero. And then here for the second one, we could express this as inverse cosh, but I think what I'm gonna do is it's easier to evaluate for me is write this in terms of natural log. So using the formula for that, we just get natural log of t plus square root t squared minus one, and that whole thing's gonna be evaluated from one to square root of two. Coming over here, evaluating at zero, that first term's gonna be zero, minus, well, our square root of two over two, I'll bring in arc sine at minus one, that's gonna be minus pi over two. Then here, we're gonna have minus square root of two over two. I think I'll factor that out, I don't know. Let's just leave that outside for now. And then we'll plug in square root of two, so it's gonna be natural log square root of two. Then you plug square root of two in here, you're gonna get squared, you're gonna get two minus one, square root of one, or just one for the first piece. Then plugging in one, we're gonna have natural log of one plus one minus one is zero, so it's gonna be one plus zero. Natural log of one is just zero, so this is going away. But minus times minus is plus here. So for my final solution is we get square root of two times pi over four minus square root of two over two, natural log square root of two plus one, Add a plus C, no, don't add a plus C, just circle it and that's it. Okay, there you have it. Really good problem from MIT 2010. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.